So just from the comments that you people are putting out there, which, listen, I am impressed. I mean, I wish that there was a place we could all just get together and, you know, sit around and have coffee and uh, really get into some uh, what I would think would be groundbreaking conversations. But our physicists have been uh, reading the comments as well. And I asked that if she would be willing to answer some questions, uh, particularly from the subscribers. And she has agreed to. And the first question that she has agreed to address is this one. The Sagittarius Dwarf Elliptical Galaxy and the Brown Dwarfs, the Physicist's Thoughts, January 13th, 2017. I'd like to thank the subscriber that actually wrote the comment there. You really got my attention, and I sent the question off there. What is the possibility that this is, in fact, possible? And our physicist found it intriguing as well, so I'll just read you this very quick little paper. The in this short article, I would like to discuss the question, has the Sagittarius dwarf galaxy been integrated into the Milky Way galaxy? There are two Sagittarius dwarf galaxies, but the one close to our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, is called the Sagittarius dwarf ecliptical galaxy. This galaxy is about 10,000 light years in diameter while the Milky Way is about 100,000 light years in diameter. So this dwarf galaxy is about 10% of the size of the Milky Way. It seems to be made up of four globular clusters, dense groups of stars, with M54 at the center. From this, we can immediately realize that it is something quite different from a brown dwarf star. However, this sort of question is very interesting and should make us realize that the universe we live in is in constant motion and in a state of change. And, you know, isn't that the truth, folks? Sometimes we get so uh, locked by our own mental gates that it doesn't allow us to really ask the questions of an ever-changing world solar system, galaxy, universe. So, all right, so let's take a look here. And let me get this shrunk down just a little bit more. There we go. So, this is the figure. Um, our sun to the Sagittarius dwarf ecliptical galaxy. It appears that it's 70,000 light years. Here is the galaxy itself, 10,000 light years across. Ours, 100,000. And I always find it interesting that what I have got to remember and keep in mind that when we talk about the galactic plane, our solar system, I mean our, our, our Milky Way, the galaxy, that it has a galactic north and a galactic south. All right. Relative positions, sizes, and the orbital path of the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, ecliptical galaxy, in relation to the Milky Way galaxy. The distance between the dwarf galaxy and the sun is also shown. We continue. Figure 1 above shows the relative positions and sizes of the Sagittarius Dwarf Ecliptical Galaxy and the Milky Way galaxy. The Sagittarius Dwarf Ecliptical Galaxy is about 50,000 light years from the center of our galaxy and about 70,000 light years from our Sun. The Dwarf Galaxy's approximate orbital path is also shown. This small galaxy has a polar orbit around our galaxy and an orbital period of between 550 and 750 million years. Wow. <laughs> it was at its closest position to the center of our galaxy about 50 million years ago. How about a day on that uh, system, huh? This galaxy is in the process of being incorporated into our galaxy, and some of its stars have been lost to our galaxy. But 
At this time, it still remains as a se separate elongated eclipse. It is thought that it must have been a spherical object before it started being incorporated into our galaxy. I bet. But the process of being completely integrated into our galaxy will most likely take another hundred million years. Wow. Since the sun is almost on the other side of the Milky Way galaxy core from the dwarf galaxy's position, the integration of this galaxy with ours is not likely to affect the solar system. No, our solar system is being affected by other stars in our galaxy. Stars have planetary systems, so it is very likely that there are a number of extra planets in our solar system at present. Also, if brown dwarf stars come into our solar system from outside, at least some would probably come in through the Kuiper Belt and would therefore drag a lot of Kuiper Belt objects into the solar system with them. This would cause a lot of debris in the form of asteroids and comets to come within reach of Earth. And indeed, the number of these objects has increased greatly in recent years as shown in figure two below. This is further evidence that large objects have invaded the solar system and other evidence I have written about points to at least some of these objects being brown dwarf stars. I believe that we are in the evolution of science, particularly where, where astronomy is concerned, of understanding that our perception of space has been probably most likely wrong, and I agree with her. Figure two, charts from the Near Earth Object Program showing that the number of discovered new Earth objects have grown exponentially in recent years. We're seeing those effects, ladies and gentlemen. We are. It's undeniable. The anecdotal evidence is mounting so great, it's going to become mainstream news. It's already becoming mainstream news. In conclusion, the universe is in a state of change, and so we can expect things to change in our solar system as well. The evidence I've written about seems to point to that change being caused by brown dwarf stars and possibly other object, which may be a part of a larger planetary system having come close to our sun. I agree. Thank you, physicist. I appreciate this very much. I know our audience does as well. And again, if you have questions, you can get it to my email address. It's right there on the contact point of my YouTube channel. And I look forward to um, other papers like this. All right, be kind to one another.